So in this video, we'll be replacing the power jack on a Super Nintendo. Uh, now I have my Super Nintendo console here, and at first glance it looks normal, looks fine, right? But then you go to the back, where we have all our plugs at, and you'll notice that the power jack is kind of like a black hole, which it shouldn't look like that. Um, here's a replacement piece, which I'll put a link down below in the description for this replacement piece if you want to do the same thing. Uh, there's a plastic piece in there that kind of helps guide the power plug into there, but for whatever reason this one broke off. I don't know how I got this from somebody at some point, and uh, yeah, I bought this piece, and we got to do some soldering, and obviously take the console apart. So let me go ahead and show you what supplies I have, and kind of what you got to do. All right, so first of all, you need a Super Nintendo console. You will also need this little replacement piece right here. This one is a third-party replacement piece. If you compare it side by side to the original uh, piece that's in here, they obviously look a little bit different. They're they're close enough though. Uh, if you're going to resell this, you should note that it is a third-party replacement piece. You'll also need some solder, so you can solder obviously, and then to go along with that, you need a soldering iron. I have one by Hako, Hako, not sure how to say it, but it is a very, very nice soldering iron. I'll link that down below as well. I also have some pliers. Not sure if I'll need these, but I might need them. Um, you also need a security bit so that you can open up the Super Nintendo. These come in a lot of just random stuff you buy for Nintendo products online. You can also buy these for like a few bucks on eBay and uh, have some flux and then some, uh, what do you call this stuff? The, yeah, the desoldering wick. So I'll try to link all this stuff down below. Let's go ahead and open this console up and get started. All right, so first things first, you want to take out the six screws in the bottom of the Super Nintendo. So you got two here, two here, and two here. Pretty simple. You take your security bit, slide it down in there, and we'll take it apart. All right, so we got all six screws out. You can go ahead and take out the top piece off. And this Super Nintendo is clearly very dirty. You need to clean it up, but it comes apart very simply. So we need to get all the way down to the board. So we're going to have to take out probably, what is this, six, seven, maybe about ten screws. And uh, I'll show you each one. And at this point, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver. Don't need that security bit anymore, as far as I'm aware. Let's we'll just go ahead and start taking out screws. So we have one right there we're going to take out. And then next, we're going to take out this screw right here. And then next, we'll take out this screw. And then next up, we'll take out these two screws right here. And then next, we're going to take out this screw right here. And then these two screws right here. All right, move that switch out of the way. And then we're going to remove this screw right here. And then this eject piece right here, you can go ahead and take that out of the way. I'm not really sure if we need to, but... Um, just move it to the side, make sure not to lose that spring. And now we should be able to lift the board up. Um, oh, I gotta take this piece apart, hold on. So actually you can just remove this ribbon cable right here, just pull it out slowly, make sure not to damage anything. And there you go, you're down to the board. Let's go ahead and move the external casing to the side and we'll zoom in a bit more. All right, so I went ahead and removed this switch as well just to get some more space. It went into this little plug right there. You just pull it out very gently. And uh, yeah, so this piece right here is when we're replacing. Let me go ahead and grab my third party one. It can show you, so you can, Clearly see there's a bit bit of a difference there. Um, the replacement one is not quite as crisp, like the writing is not quite, quite as crisp. The uh, color is a little bit off, but it's close enough and it's what we gotta do to uh, fix it. So uh, next step, I believe, is we need to first remove this screw right here, that one right there. And now I believe it is time to solder. So you can kind of see this piece is starting to wiggle off uh, because I took out this screw and there's nothing holding it down over here. The only thing holding it down now is these two solder pads right here. So let me just like zoom in so you can see it a bit better. All right, yeah, so these are the two pins we're gonna be desoldering so we can take this piece off. That's essentially where those pins inside the power plug go to. Can't really see it from the side, but there, there are two pins that go into these slots. So we're gonna desolder those, pull this thing off, and we'll put the new one on. Now, I'm not gonna call myself a soldering expert, but I know enough to be dangerous. And uh, speaking of dangerous, soldering irons are a bit dangerous. So make sure you're careful. These are very hot. These will burn you. And uh, I just tinned my soldering iron. We're going to go ahead and try to desolder uh, some of this solder right here and pull this out. All right, so I didn't get all the solder off, but I've gotten a bunch of it off so far, as you can see from my desoldering wick. And something else you can kind of do, this is a, a little bit sketchier, but this is kind of the way I like to pull stuff off of a board sometimes, is if you heat up the pads and you pull it off quick enough, you can kind of just slide it out of the slot without having to remove all the solder. So I'm just kind of going back and forth here until I can get both of these pads heated up for long enough that I can just kind of slide them out of the of the board. I'm not sure if it'll work here, but that's what I'm that's what I'm attempting to do right now. And actually, it looks like I got one more thing in the way. Uh, I think I need to remove remove this screw right here to give myself a little bit more leeway. I'll call it um, in order to to pull this part out. Actually, sorry, that was the wrong screw. Nothing, no harm in taking that screw out, but I need to take this screw right here out because this is the one that's kind of still in my, in my way. All right, so I took that screw out. And that screw aligns to a little piece down in there you can't really see, but it's uh, mounted kind of intertwining with this piece. So I just needed to take that out so I can get this whole piece out. All right, sorry guys, I went ahead and removed some more screws. So I went ahead and removed 
all these screws, one, two, three, four, five, that kind of just frees up some more space on top. So this piece comes off now, and also there is one screw right there. Now this piece will slide off. This piece right here, I don't think will slide off. Um, that should give us a little bit more room to work with now. And as you can see, it is a little bit tricky. Uh, the plastic piece, which we have to slide this whole thing off, it's kind of intertwined between the PCB and this uh, the RF out port right there. Um, so we kind of got to, you basically have to desolder this pull those pins out and then also slide the whole mechanism out. Uh, a little bit difficult, but we'll get there. So I finally got this plastic piece off. Uh, so like you guys saw it, it originally was like right there. And these two little metal pins, hopefully it'll focus, there you go. Those are the two pins that went through these two holes. And I ended up kind of just pulling it off and ripping it out almost. Uh, I got enough solder out that it was pretty easy to rip off. Um, I didn't have enough, quite enough solder that I could actually bend it out of place, but that was how I got it out. Um, if you do that, just be very careful that you don't damage anything else. But now we have to do the tricky part of uh, putting the new one on. And you can kind of see in the new one here, you've got one metal tab right there and one metal tab right there. And so those two kind of got to slide into those slots right there. So uh, this will be a little bit difficult, but we'll, we'll make it work. And so actually, I think that's why uh, they made these bend this way because uh, essentially, I got to get this on like that, but to do that, I kind of got to slide the pin into place and then twist it in so that it fits. Because this plastic piece right there, the little tab, has to fit between the PCB and this little metal tab, um, which is very difficult to do that and also get metal tabs to fit through these two little holes. So the way they got these things angled, I think actually will help. All right, so after a lot of finagling, I finally got this piece in place. It's kind of hard to explain how it got in there, but you can see those two metal tabs, one there, one there, that got in place. And I kind of just had to twist them and slide this piece in until it just fit. You gotta be careful, kind of go, go one millimeter at a time and uh, you know make sure those back pieces fit uh, through the holes. Make sure your holes align here. So we got that hole aligns, well, at least pretty closely. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it up a little bit later, but that hole aligns, that hole aligns, that hole aligns well. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and actually solder this thing now. So compared to everything we just did, this should be a whole lot easier now. Oh, oh I almost pushed it out of place. That would have been bad. But this part should be a lot easier. Put some flux in place, and then we'll get our soldering iron ready and get our solder and just uh, solder these pins in place. And actually, the smart thing to do would be to go ahead and put one of these screws back right here so that that'll stay in place when I'm soldering. So I'm going to do that. All right, so I got this piece back in place. Got the screw in here. I got the two pads soldered. This hole is aligned, this hole is aligned, and now we should be able to start putting this thing back together. So I finished cleaning out the inside of the console and got the console back together. Let's go ahead and test it out, make sure we still have power. So as you can see here, I have the console unplugged. Let's go ahead and plug it in. The plug seems to fit just fine. Um, it, may, it might not be quite as perfect as the OEM, but let's go ahead and see if we have power. And we do, cool, so it works. Awesome. So overall, I don't think this power port replacement is too difficult. You just need some soldering skills and some patience. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you out. And I'll see you next time.